Welcome back to the Deeper with Red podcast. My name is Red. I am your show host, and today my heart is heavy. I don't know if you've been watching the news or paying attention to what's going on. I'm sure you've seen the big hurricane that came through recently has devastated many parts of the Southeast. One area in particular has been very hard hit in ways that nobody imagined. Uh, Asheville, North Carolina, which is one of my favorite places. I absolutely love that town. I love going and visiting. I try and get there as often as I can. It's one of my favorite places to hop on the bike and go and just get away and just chill. Just kind of get away from it all, soak in the energy, enjoy the vibe. And it's one of my favorite places. I was supposed to go, actually, this coming week uh, just to get away. It was going to be my vacation, get away from everything, recharge. And then the storm hit and just brought utter chaos. The flooding has destroyed so much. It has hurt so many people. Some people have lost their lives, unfortunately, and many more have lost their homes and their businesses and just so much destruction. And it's going to take months, uh, if not even years, for the entire area to kind of recover and rebuild. And my heart is very heavy from this. I'm heartbroken by it all. Not because I'm missing out on a vacation, but that's like my second home. It, it just hurts. And that's not to diminish any of the other areas hit. It is catastrophic for so many people. But it got me to thinking in terms of what I wanted to talk about today. And that's the process of starting over and rebuilding. Most of us have had at least one time in our life where we've had to kind of start over whether it be in a relationship and work or business or anything like that. And even in the kink world, there are plenty of times where we may have to start over or we have to kind of rebuild ourselves. Life is not perfect and not everything goes the way we plan. Sometimes this shit just happens and there's only so much you can do to stop it. Sometimes it can be our own fault. Sometimes we can bring things upon ourselves out of our own arrogance or foolishness or just lack of knowledge and not being willing to admit that we have a lack of knowledge. But sometimes you just don't see it coming. It could be a huge storm that just brews up and wipes you out. But unless it's a life-ending event, you're going to be starting over in some way, shape, or form. If it's a relationship ending, you're going to start over. If it's a kink, your kink community coming to an end, right? You're still going to start over. You may step outside of the kink world and build a community elsewhere, but you're still going to be building something new. When that happens, there are a couple things you have to do. You can sit around and feel sorry for yourself and that's not unusual. I mean, you're going to have to deal with some of the shock and trying to wrap your head around what has happened. And that's, that's a whole thing in and of itself. But once you get past that shock, once you get past that initial, what just happened, you have to start to begin that process of rebuilding. The first step of that is taking assessment. You have to look around and see what's even still there. Right? So in the example of what's going on in these communities, they have to look and see what kind of damage is actually there. If their home is still there, what kind of structural damage has happened? Is there anything they need to fix? If the home is completely gone, what does the foundation look like? Is there something they could even still rebuild there? Or has the surroundings changed so much that they can't even do that? In our own personal lives, when we have to start over or we have to rebuild ourselves, we have to take assessment of where we are. We have to take assessment of what we've done, what choices we've made. And while it may be very easy to blame somebody else for everything, and I think that becomes a default for most of us, nine times out of 10, we tend to blame somebody else. 
your relationship ends, it's their fault. They did this, they did that, and so it's completely their fault. The reality is, though, that we all tend to contribute something to that. A relationship only works when there are two people actively working together. And a relationship can often fail because we're not both actively working together. Sometimes it can be completely one-sided. Somebody can step out in a way that they shouldn't have and violate all the trust. And of course, that is something that happens and we have to account for that. But even in that, where did we miss? What, what did we not see? What signs were we missing? Regardless, the best thing we can do for ourselves is to stop and take an assessment. Find out where we are. Remind ourselves who we are. What is it we even want? Has that changed now? You've gone through an experience. Maybe that type of relationship wasn't really the relationship you thought it was going to be. Then the question there becomes, is it because of the type of relationship or is it because of the person you were involved with? And you have to make some assessment on that. I've seen people swear off a specific type of relationship because it failed. Uh, For example, people really quickly will run away from polyamory because they tried poly and it didn't work. And yet monogamous relationships fail every day and people continue to try and do that over and over again as well. So sometimes it's not about the type of relationship. Sometimes it's about the people involved in the relationship. So you really have to do a little bit of an assessment there to better understand, was it the type? Did the type not fit? Or was it the people? Maybe even a combination thereof. But you have to do that assessment and understand for yourself where you fit in that. Sometimes that's hard. You have to take a real true assessment of yourself. And we are the best at being self-critical. We can criticize ourselves all day long. We can knock ourselves down a peg left and right. But this isn't about being self-criticizing. It's about better understanding ourselves. And that is sometimes very hard for people to do. That requires digging a little deeper. Most of the time when we criticize ourselves, it's surface level crap. It's just garbage on the top That is easy to pick off. It could be something, you know, I don't look a certain way or I do a stupid thing or whatever it may be, right? I don't talk right. I don't act right. Whatever. You know, one of the reasons I don't do video right now is because I have this little twitch with my nose and it annoys me to see that on camera. And that's something I'll have to get over at some point because eventually I do want to bring video into what I'm doing. But I'm a worse critic in that. But you have to get past that and start looking a little bit further as to why these things happen. Going back to that example of why I don't do video. It's annoying, yes, and I can criticize that all day long, but why does that bother me? And it bothers me because I don't want to be judged by other people watching my video. It, it plays to my own insecurity there, right? And so you have to understand where you're at and what's going on. Taking that self-assessment, understanding what strengths, what's weaknesses, it's like looking at that house that just went through that storm. Is everything okay? What needs to be reinforced? What needs to be fixed? What damage has been done? Because you can't fix any of it if you don't know what the problem is. You can't fix the house that's broken If you don't know what needs to be fixed, sure, you can grab a hammer and nails and just start banging at things, but that doesn't mean it's going to fix anything. You have to know what the problem is. So take some time to really assess what's going on. I'll give you one more quick example in that vein. Right now, the roads up in the mountains are an absolute mess. They are, in some places, completely destroyed. I've seen roads completely washed away from all the flooding. But there are bridges that are still standing. And at first look, when you look at it, it looks fine. It's still there. The river didn't wash it away. Everything's good. The road doesn't look like it's been affected. That's fine. 
But those bridges are still closed until they can inspect them to make sure that underneath something didn't go wrong. Because if the foundation at the bottom of that bridge is unstable, driving over that bridge could cost your life. So it's important to know what is wrong, what needs to be worked on, what needs to be fixed before you can even begin working on the solution. The next part of that is to start putting together a plan on what you're going to do. Now that you know what needs to be fixed, what needs to be addressed, how do you go about doing that? Was it knowledge? Do you need to learn more about a certain topic? Do you need to learn more about relationships and how they work? Is there a defect within yourself that you want to improve or work on? How can you do that? Is it a skill that you need to learn? There are so many different things that can go in to figuring out what the problem is, but then also how now do we resolve those issues? How do we fix it? How do we rebuild it? I had a situation myself where I had a relationship with a friend that blew up, like bad blew up. Their own insecurities led them to a place where they had to blow everything up around them, and I got caught up in that as well. And I based some decisions just before that on some of the information they had provided me. In retrospect, after everything blew up, I had to go back and look at that information. Was that even true? Or was that being fed because of their own insecurities to manipulate things? Once I realized kind of what that was, I needed to go back and make some adjustments myself. I had to go apologize to some people that had gotten hurt because of that. So knowing kind of what the problem is and then how are you going to fix it is an important step. The next part's doing it. It's taking the action. If it's a skill, find somebody else that has that skill and go learn how to do it. Watch videos online or go to classes, whatever it may be. If it's something you're missing in knowledge, then go learn. Go find that knowledge. There's plenty of it out there. If it's personal things that you need to work through, talk to somebody. Therapy is not a bad thing. Go talk to a therapist. Find somebody you can open up to and talk to. Or if you don't want to go to a therapist, find some friends or a confidant that you can really lean into. Find a mentor or a coach or something, some outlet that allows you to be able to talk these things through. Because that's how you uncover and that's how you work on what's lying underneath. So find that outlet to do that. Whatever the situation is, whatever it is that you want to adjust, you have within yourself and within your reach the ability to find that opportunity. It's out there. Now, I know you may be thinking to yourself, but yeah, I'm completely alone in all this. You may feel like some of those people stuck up in the mountains right now in the most remote areas with everything cut off. There's no cell phone. They have no roads to get in and out of, and they are kind of by themselves. I understand that's not a good place to be. The reality is, though, that most of the time that is a temporary situation. In this example that's going on in Asheville and in the North Carolina mountains, help is coming. And they're working to get those things taken care of and active so that people can be reached and they can have the help they need. Sometimes you just have to hold on a little bit longer. But in the process, do the best you can to take care of yourself. Part of that rebuilding, though, is reaching out to others around you. And if you're in a situation where you really don't have anybody else around you, find a way to be around other people. If you've just gone through a horrific breakup and you're stuck and you feel like there is nobody around you, you have no friends, you have no family, no nothing, you've lost everything, there are still people. You may not have met them yet. So do your assessment, take inventory, figure out what it is you want to work on, 
But then go put yourself in a position where you can have people around you again. Go to events. Get out. Go find something that engages you and puts you around other people. Start to rebuild the network around you. Rebuild that support system around you. The one thing I have learned throughout this life is that we are not able to do this alone. It is not something we're built for. Even the person who is the most self-inclusive, isolated type of personality still needs something. Now, they'll typically have a pet or something like that, but they, they we're not built for complete isolation. We're not built to be by ourselves all the time. And I'll give you a little tip too. If you don't have that support around you, you don't have people that you can talk to, but you have a pet, talk to your pet. You know, there's a phrase in some religions that just tell you to pray about it. And that always drove me nuts when I was a religious person. That usually told me you didn't have an answer, so what was the point? But I've learned since then that's not necessarily the case. So a lot of times when I need to work through a problem, when I need to figure out what my next steps are or or how to do something or just get more introspective. I literally will talk to myself. I'll get out for a walk and just go talk to myself, talk through it, be very open and candid with myself. And in that process, I'm getting out my thoughts. I'm allowing them to be physically expressed. I can hear them and then begin to sort through them. So, Whether you're talking to a friend or you're talking to a pet or just go for a walk and talk to yourself, there are plenty of options out there for you to truly be able to work through whatever situation is going on. One key piece to that is to be open and honest with yourself. Don't lie to yourself. Lies are going to get you nowhere. They're not going to help you solve any solutions. They're not going to help you find the end result you're looking for. And I'll be honest with you, that's not always easy. Being honest with yourself can be very hard. Because sometimes you're going to uncover some ugly truths that you just do not want to face. But you have to. Because when you begin to face those truths, when you begin to understand who you are, what makes you tick, even if it's not pretty, then you begin to empower yourself to make whatever changes you want to be. I myself am not perfect. I will never claim to be perfect, but I am continuing to work towards that more perfect version of what I want myself to be. I know the person I want to be. I've laid it out. I've seen it. I know what that person looks like. I know who that person is, how that person acts, how they are with other people. That's what I want to be. And I still fail at that. I still miss the mark almost every day. But I keep striving for that. I keep looking for that as my end goal. And every time I fail, I will look back and say, okay, what did we do wrong? How do we mess that up? The last part of all this is that it takes courage. Sometimes it's easy to just pack it up and and just be done. That's sometimes the easiest thing. And for some of these people that are dealing with everything going on, They may choose to just pack up, not worry about trying to restart their business, uh, move it back in with family and not worry about trying to rebuild their home. And in some cases, some people will decide that life is just done. But to rebuild, it takes courage. And you've got to find that courage from within. It's great to have support people around you that will encourage you and, and lift you up and let you know, hey, they're there for you. But they are not the ones that are going to do all the work. They can help. I mean, somebody can grab a hammer and a nail and start helping you bang around on the house. 
but you've got to be willing to put in the work. So that courage has to come from within you. If you're not sure if you have it, yeah. sit down for a little bit. It's okay. Take a break. But I promise you, if you look inside, that courage is there. It's part of the human spirit. It's what keeps this entire human race going. No matter what the catastrophe or the craziness of the world may be, we still have within us this amazing power to keep going, to find the courage to move forward. So no matter what you're going through, whether you're starting over and rebuilding or you're even thinking about it, maybe you're in a situation where what you have right now just is not working and you're going to need to rebuild. I want to let you know that you've got this. You can make it. You will make it. Take a few minutes to catch your breath and wrap your head around the situation. Do some assessment and figure out what went wrong, what happened, and what needs to be fixed. Make a plan for what you need to do and then start executing on that plan. Put yourself in a position so that you can win for you and rebuild the life around you that you truly want. It's out there. Go get it. You've got this.